are back at Flower Expo. It is a beautiful day in Massachusetts, somewhere on the western edge of Massachusetts. I went to college out here, but I never I never got this far out here. Actually, maybe I went to Africa. doesn't matter. Dimitri Downing back with Meet Unshackled. And we have the co-host. It's an honorary guest. We have a, this is a very, is this a, is our first one we've done together? Like, it, I think, baby. We've yeah. done a couple, but. Mitch from Respect My Region. What's up? What's up? How are you thank, doing today? Thank you for having me. We got we got Mita and Mass, man. Mita and Mass, you know. This is awesome. This is like a who's who. Oh, we got Destiny. Destiny, why don't you just jump on over there? I'm gonna walk what? around right now to meet a few vendors, but we got we got a who's who of the United States cannabis industry gathered here under the Bello family umbrella at Flower Expo. So we're very pleased to be at this inaugural event. What are you catching so far? What do you what do you think? Uh, man, it's good, to, you know, to, to see that 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 Hall of Flowers type vibe out here in Mass. You know, a little bit of that Cali, that experience in terms of putting things together, having a focused goal within the event, and then obviously kind of allowing a safe safe space to consume while being B two B, not not necessarily just a party, right? I think that's what the Bellows have kind of built on the West Coast. So bringing that flavor out here to the Mass, which is a, a personal exciting market for me so yeah there's like people are working and chilling and networking all the same thing there's ryan from grow bags over there busy answering emails and this is a good example of i mean Stu's a guy i need to know in the industry who i don't know we're sitting here having a conversation i've walked Stu. i'm like we should you know this is the comment this is the kind of stuff we want to put on the podcast so people get to know Stu. Stu, how are you doing? Good. I'm um, uh, Stu Zakum. I also went to college here in Massachusetts. Where'd you go to school? At Boston University. I went to BU too. I went to uh, College of Communication. You went to COM? COM. Like, I was uh, BU 95. 78. So you were like during the Howard Stern years. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Did you support him for governor? No. Silver? No, Howard oh, Stern. Oh, no, because, you know, Silver ran for governor. Oh, John Silver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, did he run for president? No, he ran for governor. Okay, yeah, yeah. That would, that would, he, he was cool, he too. Was, mm, not this, so cool. This is Boston <laughs> University. We're like a bunch of... You old... geeks. You guys are geeking out over here. But I, uh, my company is Bridge Strategic Communications. Yes. I run a PR firm uh, where my primary focus has been cannabis for the last 10 years. I've helped launch a lot of brands uh, for people in Massachusetts. Most recently, Berkshire Roots did a whole brand integration with heavy metal cannabis as you can see from the t-shirt i'm wearing can we so, get a uh, a turnaround i saw you walking by it says uh the metaverse meets the caniverse can we see that on the camera this one here you got it you got it eric move this way a little bit <laughs> by the way i i have a whole continent in the metaverse and cannabis is legal on my continent I'll, we don't have to <laughs> well, get into that <laughs> You know, the strange thing is I actually I have real worked too. on this movie when it came out in 1981 because I started in the movie business. Right. Oh, so wow. when uh, I met the Berkshire Roots people and they said, and I said, have you met them like the movie? And they said, yeah. I said, I said, I did the PR for the film and I we had an amazing story because the premiere was at the Guggenheim Museum. We had Cheap Trick play live because they wow. were on the soundtrack. And in 1981, I smoked weed on the floor of the Guggenheim Museum. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, all this is escaping Destiny over there. She doesn't even know what Spinal Tap was, you know. But it's so okay. this is a I'm classic thinking about stoner. an actual like Spinal Tap procedure. Uh, no, Heavy Metal is a classic stoner <laughs> animated movie. Okay. Yes. So if you were to watch it, a you should be high because the the artwork is so amazing and the story is kind of very spacey, but oh, cool. it's it's kind of like in that status. So of, you guys are like playing on that. Yeah. But uh, so, and then in the back New to cannabis. Back to <laughs> cannabis. Uh, in the New York market, I represent Happy Monkey, which is probably one of the best known cannabis lifestyle yeah, brands. Happy Monkey. And uh, I helped open Union Square Travel Agency, a cannabis store, which is one of the few, very few legal stores that are operating in Manhattan right now, um, and and other brands. But it's you know what I really love about the space, besides my passion for the for it overall as a consumer is I can apply my skill set that I develop in other industries here. Right. And mm -hmm. I think it really kind of crystallizes the opportunity for jobs for people who may be aged out in corporations and yet still have a lot to contribute. We need everybody. You know, it's not just cultivators or plant experts. You need plumbers, electricians, absolutely publicists, PR. accountants, lawyers. Any anything that exists in other industries have a life here. So I think if people were to understand that, perhaps that would start getting into the stigma and say, "Shit, I want to be in that business." Are you working with any? Are you work with uh, 
all brands, manufacturer, cultivation, dispensary, anything it, it's, brand? It's lifestyle and on retail, not, okay. not on the manufacturing side. Okay. And yeah. are you um, Massachusetts, New York, I'm California? I'm based in New Jersey, but mm -hmm. as we saw during the pandemic, you don't need to be physically anywhere anymore. I like uh, that. And uh, so I have clients in Michigan. Sounds like a line from the, from the Matrix or something. <laughs> you, know? you don't need to be physically anywhere anymore. It's the, it's right? the caniverse. The caniverse. Like, it's hey, exactly what it is. You might be the one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I am the anointed so, one, yes. But no, so it's cool. And then to your point, Mitch, I was also at uh, Whole Flowers. Yep, yep. And this definitely has that vibe. Uh, yeah. I don't smell as much weed yet. But aside from that, there's plenty of weed here. Uh, I think it's a great showcase for farmers and for the buyers because where else you're going to get an opportunity to really see what the market looks like in a in a single place without traveling the state. Coming here, I I got a wonderful tour because uh, my GPS took me through all these yep. little lane roads. Yeah, I never even knew this part of the state existed. We're literally so. in like the middle of of nowhere. It feels like, uh, but, except, except for to the people who live here. Except yes. for the people who live right. here, we right. have a spot that we're staying here. It's called the High Pocket. It feels like we're literally at the high pocket of. Well, that's the name of our of Airbnb, isn't it? Yeah, a high pocket. I didn't catch the, I didn't catch that until now. <laughs> that's interesting. I think it's the high pocket of the mountain. So you're you you've been involved, but how many clients do you have at this point? Probably a bunch. A bunch. I mean, I don't keep track. I yeah. mean, it, but it's enough that it keeps me busy. And you have one client here today, or? Uh, yes, Berkshire Roots and Heavy Metal. And we're gonna do them a little bit later. Yes, sir. That's going to be awesome. Uh, none of your other clients are here today. No, no, no. Other we got to get you some clients across. Yeah. Uh, yeah. California, you have any big California brands? Uh, I have not represented in California. Oh. That's, the, that's the next leap. But yeah. um, I, I, pretty, I have a nice handful that keeps me busy. So I'm not like looking yeah. to, at this point, it's like I've arrived at the place I want to be. And I, like I work it. with people who I want to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the, the retainer system works fine. I don't need to be milk zillions. I want to have fun. And I want to work with yeah. people who want to have fun and who are not egotistical and understand the role that PR can be for them in a space where marketing and advertising are severely restricted, where you can't do lots of things. We're the solution. Mm -hmm. So once they start to understand that, that will help you know make more business come my way. I should have been a PR guy. I, I, I probably missed my calling. Yeah, I would say so. It's about you know being able to talk to people listening to what they have to say yeah and then a lot of common sense uh, uh, this the reason i take notes is i'm an ex-prosecutor thank god i'm not prosecuting anymore uh i haven't prosecuted since i got a dui in uh 2000 oh by the way i used to ship marijuana from tucson san diego to boston to boston university you know i always like to throw that out on unshackled because it's way past the statute of limitations. Yeah, well, our our and, educated, unshackled uh, uh, listeners definitely know that. <laughs> when, I, when I was touring schools and I went to BU for my tour. I, so I had to bring that up. We were at Miles Standish Hall, which is a big residence hall. Miles Standish, yeah, Miles Standish. So the tour guide says to me, I'm with my mom. So last year on a per capita basis, BU was the largest, third largest area distributor of uh, Quaaludes in the U.S. That's right. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and my mom's like, what? And I said, no. Really, but that's uh, that was a selling point. That was the seventies, right? Yeah, yeah. And then in the eighties, it was cocaine. When I came, it was marijuana. It just like be used, just like access. The... Yeah, I mean access, right? Like, yeah. People want access. So quaaludes were the gates. Oh, quaaludes were. <laughs> you, you know what a quaalude is? I don't take them. No, they don't make them. They haven't made them in years. You can't even get bootlegs. But uh, they were a very uh, a drug for seduction. Let's put it that way. Okay. It was it worked very well in that in that respect, uh, and which made it very popular. You know, so what was you know? I want to talk. I was going to ask you what the most challenging thing is for for uh, cannabis companies in the PR realm, but uh, well, I mean we can talk about that because but, but I also want to talk about like you know because brands are going to be evolving more if they have the help of professionals like yourself. Correct. Because you're only going to reach a certain number of individuals within the cannabis community, which is a great community, and you better build your base there. You better respect what that is. But if you want to expand beyond, you got to start touching other elements. So it's about the storytelling. That's how you separate yourself from all the brand. And it's not about how high somebody gets. You know, that's, that's not going to help. We have a yes. stigma that we have to try and eradicate. And by telling the right stories that cannabis really helps people's lives, mm -hmm. improves them when we're not getting addicted to 
uh, opiates and other drugs that you can use cannabis for the same symptoms in a much more healthier way. Um, and cancer story, whatever stories that are uh, emotional yes. um, and really help demonstrate that someone's life was changed in a positive way is what I need to tell. Whether it's a family working together, you know, yeah. they get the license and it's another version of the family business or other things like that that take away this negative persona based on the propaganda we've been fed mm -hmm. since, you know, the times of reefer madness and then we're only reinforced when Nixon, you know, made cannabis a schedule one drug as a way to punish hippies and black people because they weren't his supporters. Mitch, I like him. I'm glad you yeah, introduced yeah, me. Well, we're chilling over here, and you introduced me to him. It's awesome. So, it's like, like you, you, you make me remind me of things like Spinal Tap, and then I just had a vision. Johnny, the way that you push that cow, man, I want to party with you. Stripes, remember? I worked on Stripes. Bill Murray, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. That's It's about the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the about story. the story, and it's like... Those right, are, and then that's really a perfect analogy. Exactly, though, you know? exactly. So, so I, I just remembered that movie for the first time in like 30 years because, thank you. But trying, and then Sorry. the real challenge is getting mainstream it's having exposure. A moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need, you know, we, we certainly need what you do, Mitch, mm -hmm. out of doubt. But we also need more on the main cable, on the networks, morning shows. What's mm -hmm. really ironic is on the morning shows now, network morning shows, there's always a segment about chefs. We'll have them prepare this marvelous meal for some kick-ass restaurant with alcohol. And it's yeah. 7.30. It's 8 o'clock. And mm. they're guzzling like you are, but they're drinking uh, alcohol and, and some really strong drinks. No, There's no taboo about that. Right. So in states where cannabis is legal, I <laughs> personally don't understand why they can't do that with cannabis right. in a segment. So my mission, and I'll make it happen, trust right. me is to get one of those shows to do something. Even if it's CBD, yeah. not THC. Under but the 3%. to break that ceiling so that they realize the world's not going to end. The excuse I always get is the affiliates, it's the advertisers. Believe me, that's it's just people who are still scared by getting boycotted in the Midwest, like all the stuff that's going on with the way companies are put, uh, being punished for their pride events. Mm -hmm. Same thing they're worried about that happening with cannabis, which really shouldn't because we are legal in quite a few number of states right now and, and that mainstream press is so crucial like you were saying because it, it gets you know word of mouth is the is the best you know vehicle of advertising and press gives that exposure especially mainstream pop culture press is going to get that widespread exposure where you know i use the example of like you know my parents are not cannabis consumers they're not even in the can of curious area you right. know mm -hmm. maybe a topical or something but if something gets in the newspaper or on the news, they're going to see it, and then they're going to talk about it. And then that, that talking further snowballs down, where even if that initial uh, person engaging with that content isn't the ideal audience, it starts a much wider spread Absolutely. conversation, which will, has power for the plant, but also has power for brands and products as well. And mm -hmm. once again, when it's part of the conversation, we slowly break down the walls around it and make it more acceptable. Why is it that when you watch a TV show or a movie, and there's a meeting in the office, and the office is in New York, L.A., a, le a, a state that's legal. And the, and the host just says, can I get you something to drink? Why can't they say, or would you like something to smoke? Just that one little right. sentence would, would do mil wonders in, in starting to make acceptability acceptable. You know, that it wouldn't be, ha, ha, you're going to get high. You get more inebriated from drinking than you will from would taking you like a, something a hit of drink. drink. You know that, that's interesting. And that I, I don't mean we we could probably do a dissertation on this and a really heavy analysis, but maybe there needs to be a phrase what, like "What would you like to drink?" implies a certain thing. Smoking is has negative connotations outside of cannabis. So, would you like to get high? How would what is that phrase that what, what would you like to get high? Not that phrase. That maybe not yeah. that phrase. But yeah. there is a phrase out there that per perhaps you're going to be inventing sometime in the next two or three years of when you're clients and you're gonna own it it's gonna be like the band-aid or the nike type thing well you know i have we got, we got a track, i, I, I track have this invented guy. a catchphrase that catch lives phrase. on today i was working on a movie in the early 80s with all these young actors called saint elmo's fire so uh i had a reporter doing what was going to be a cover story on emilio estevez who at that time was like the leader of that group of actors right and he goes out to L.A. The Brat Pack. 
So I created the phrase, the Brat Pack. The what? I created that phrase. Because I send send the writer out. He does his, he goes, meets Emilio, um, and and I, which is what they're supposed to have dinner. So I called the writer next day. I said, so how was your night? Because you won't believe what happened. He goes, I go pick up Emilio, and he says, you know, let's go stop it here. And they go pick up Rob Lowe, and then they pick up Judd Nelson, and they three not with Andrew McCarthy. He wasn't part of that group, but they went out in the town. And, and I go, man, it's kind of like Frank, Sammy, Dean, but not like a rap pack, more like a brat pack, just like a throwaway yeah. phrase. That became the cover Damn. story and the line that defines that whole generation of actors. Yeah, still and, to this day. And Andrew McCarthy actually is doing a documentary about that and how it impacted all of them. I once ran into Judd Nelson a few years ago at an event. I said, I hope you don't want to kill me, you know, but I'm the guy who, you know, created that name that's going to be in your obituary. You know, and he goes, no, it was fine. It was great. You know, da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, others did not like being part of that. Well, yeah, I was going to say Leo or one of them. I just saw in an interview the other day. I was like, yeah, I never really liked that label. Yeah, so. yeah. A lot of them didn't like that <laughs> label. But it sold the movie. It was not a great movie, uh, but it made the movie successful. So and, you, you need to do like a line of pre-rolls. <laughs> The Brad Pack. They can say a line of something else. <laughs> you know, no, no, like, oh, right. no, like you, you can do like a, a set of like a, a variety pack of pre rolls called the Brad Pack Pack, and then have Judd and all these guys market it. Copyright that idea, right? No, it's, now. it's yours. It's oh, yours. It's yours. You, I, I, I give you that for my, for friendship. My blessing. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like you. It's, it's signed right. off right here. So ha- I mean, you're the man. How do people get in touch with you? Um. My uh, Instagram is at Stu Zakim, which is S-T-U-Z-A-K-I-M. Uh, my email is stu at bridgestrategic.com. And my website is bridgestrategic.com. But I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. It's, and, and, yeah, I'm everywhere. And, uh, Mitch, of course, will be back occasionally for our podcast today and tomorrow and in the future and stuff. So respect my region. You guys know yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and but uh, we'll be hanging out here the rest of the Flower Expo today, tonight, tomorrow. We're gonna become better friends, get to know each other better, get to know your clients and stuff. And uh, I hope people reach out to you. And I, I thank wish you, you a long, thank you for the opportunity, so man. Long career thank in this you. industry. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. You close it out. Oh, we're done here. All right. Yeah. Well, that was another episode of Mita Unshackled. She says that thank so you. well, you know.